There you go. You got it now. <laughs> That's my money. He's from home. This is it, boys. <laughs> Making dreams come true. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel everybody and thanks for being here. If you get a chance please subscribe if you haven't already and go down in the description and check out the website. Lots to do there, even a member section. Today my buddy 74 Standard Beetle, he bought a disc brake conversion kit with two and a half inch drop spindles. So I'm gonna try to keep this into one video. I won't know until this is done whether it's split up into part one or part two but you're gonna to get to see the complete conversion. I've never done this yet, but it really isn't a big deal. So let's go ahead and get on it and see what all we need to do. Okay, so you folks remember Casey, he was here for the fuel filter relocation bracket. So today, let's take a look at what he brought with him. He has the new rotors. Uh, he has a new Big Bore Master. That will be later when we do the rear disc on it, so we won't be using that today. There's the new 2.5-inch drop spindles. And here is the bearings and the races, which we'll have to put into the rotors. And he has the new calipers. They already put the pads in them. This is a empty, and I'm surprised... It came with the pins already installed. Let me turn it around with the pads. That was kind of convenient. And I gotta see if any clips go in there to hold them in. I'm not sure, I'll find out. And that seems to be it. It looks like there's two bleeders on each caliper. So that'll be interesting when it's time to bleed them today. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's get this all taken apart. Let's go ahead and get the little C-clip off of the speedometer cable. Here it comes. Should have had a screwdriver with me. Okay. It's just a little, little C-clip. That's all it is. Okay. I'll put that here. Let's get this off. Here it comes slowly. All right. So now we take our six millimeter Allen head. Loosen this up. Get in there. You just gotta loosen it, not all the way out. And remember, this will turn right. I don't have a crescent wrench near me, I'm just tapping this around. Not a big deal. Seems like somebody had this kind of tight though, wherever it was adjusted last. So, remember, you're turning right to loosen because this is the left front of the vehicle, okay? So, that is off, and we're gonna go ahead and slide the drum slightly, get the wheel bearings. I'll put them in a dust cap, that way they don't get laying in the dirt. And let's slide this off, and looks pretty good, pretty good. But here's the wheel bearing for the rear which came off with it, and the seal. Okay, I just seen something very weird. Let me get a rag a minute, because this is the first time I've ran into this. But as you seen when I pulled the drum off, the rear bearing was sitting here, but there was no rear seal on the brake drum to hold it in place no dust seal. That's kind of weird that somebody would have avoided doing that. So be careful who you have work on your car. 
I have never seen that where somebody didn't put the rear seal back on to hold the bearing in place. So that was probably a really bad idea, but we'll go ahead and make it right because his new rotor came with new seals. Okay, so next what we're going to do, I'm going to loosen these three bolts and pull them away so we can disconnect the brake hose and get it out of the way and then we'll go ahead and do the spindle. So hang tight a second. Okay, so you have three bolts right here which are 15 millimeter, at least on this one. So we're gonna loose them. We're going to pull the backing plate off and around because we are going to reuse this hose that was just replaced about six months ago and it's still like brand new. Otherwise you would just snip it. But let's go ahead and loosen this up first. So we'll take our 15 millimeter. I already broke these loose so you didn't have to sit there and watch me. And I left my screw gun down the house or I would have zipped these out real fast. No big deal. Okay. So I'm going to leave all this attached to the backing plate because there's no point in removing it right now. And just an added note, KC is actually nice enough to tell me you can go ahead and keep these brake shoes, backing plate, and all that stuff, and the two and a half inch drop spindles for drums because he will no longer need them. So I thought that was really cool. But helping out friends is what we do back and forth. So, okay, that is loose. We're going to take that. And you don't really want to let this hang because you'll end up ripping it. But what I am going to do is loosen this up, put a vacuum cap on it, and keep the brake fluid from running all out. So let me get that ready. This is a 14 millimeter. We're going to go ahead and loosen this. Now, once you do that, you can't turn the hose because you'll just keep winding this into a coil. You're gonna have to spin this part around the backing plate for it to unthread. And I got some vacuum caps on hand to actually block off all the fluid from rolling out. So let's spin this around until it comes off and then we'll be spinning the caliper onto it. I'll show you what I mean when the time comes in a little bit here. I might be in your way temporarily. Okay, and there. But what I'm going to do is put a vacuum cap on. See, a lot of people would sit there and let the braking system drain, put a vacuum cap on, and there you have it. You don't lose all the brake fluid, and it's less to go ahead and bleed off. So, I can move my drain pan safely now, and look, no mess. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the tie rod in. So let's get the cotter pin out. Usually just grab them like this, use some leverage, and pull. And that one, that's okay. I got spare ones. Oh, it's going to fight with me, of course. Okay, I had to mess around taking that cotter pin out. It was really screwing me around. But here's your outer tie rod in. We're going to disconnect that next. It is a 19 millimeter. So let's take that off. Almost. And what I do usually to get them out of here not this, but right here on the knuckle. Give it a smack. And it didn't come out. There it is. Okay, so you give it a little love tap. Let's put the nut back on so the threads don't get buggered up on the end and move that out of the way. Okay, now we need to pull the throttle cable through and get it out of the way. You've seen how it just goes right through it. No big deal. Let's put that up out of the way. Okay, what we got left now is the upper and lower ball joint nuts, and let's do that next. So, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this one first. It's a 19 millimeter. Okay. 
Now, one thing you're going to have to pay attention to is right in here. Let me see if I can get you in a little closer. Right in here, there is a large nut. Is what I call it, and that's what adjusts the front end alignment. So I'm going to mark that before I break them loose so I can put it back on the same way. But he's also going to be getting a front end alignment done, which is a smart thing. So, ooh, I need ratchet wrenches. Anybody want to donate a nice new set to me? Woo! I'm just kidding with you guys. Okay. And there is a washer on this top one, as you see there. Boom. Okay. See. All right. Okay. So now we're going to turn this the opposite way. So let me move the camera. What I did here, I took a long bar, which any type of bar will work. It don't matter. And I got it wedged in here, and I'm going to pry up on the, top, the ball joint, the control arm. Hopefully, I'm not in your way. I probably am. And there you go. Okay, so all as I did, in case my hand was in your way, is I pried up on this arm, and then the spindle came right out. Now, it doesn't look like, let's see something here. There you go. If you tap on this knuckle, it will lift right off of the lower ball joint. If not, then you use a pickle fork, okay? So, we're down to the nitty gritty. Let's start putting the bearings and races into the new rotors. Okay. Okay, so now we're at the workbench. And what we need to do first is we need to prep the rotors by putting the races in and of course, freeze up the bearings and get them ready and then we'll put the spindle on. Now my neighbor was nice enough to loan me something because I'm a cheapskate and what it is is it's a whole set and of course right here I have the 50 millimeter on and it's a bearing race set to press them in. You got to make sure you have the right one on there and the best thing to do if you have time is take the races and put them in a freezer overnight because they will go right in so much easier. But I didn't have the opportunity to do that. So I am going to put a little bit of grease on them, okay? And maybe that'll help persuade them a little bit. But let's see how this tool works, if they help get it in easier. Okay, so I didn't think you felt like watching me fight, but I used this and it still was sending it in a little bit off center. So I had to use my 36 millimeter socket to even it out a little, but it's pounded in nice and even. So let's go to the other side. Okay, this one will go in the top. And when you do this, I'm sure you know this already, but this flat side, ooh, right there. The flat side goes down in first. The chamfered end is where your bearing seats into. So let's set that here. Let me find one that fits it. And the 39 millimeter fits it. So let me put a little grease around it. I don't think it helps a whole lot, but every little bit does something. Okay. How to work on air. And let's try to get this in straight. Sometimes I tap a little to get it started evenly. Okay. Let's see if I have any luck.
Of course it's going in crooked. Okay, as you can see, if you're looking in there, you can see that slot. That's what you come behind when you want to pound them out. But you can see that the bearing is seated all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of them in, and then we'll go ahead and start assembling the spindle on there. Okay? Okay, so all the races are seated in. They all go in the same way. You've already seen that. What we're going to do now is the bearings. Now the best thing to do, some people have the little machines that I do it manually. Let me see, are you in there? Yeah, you're in there. You've got to get the grease up inside of the bearing. So this part right here, you've got to push the grease up inside is the way to do it. A lot of people put it in the palm of their hands and do that. I'll show you what I mean. And they just push keep pushing it up in. They sell a little tool to put the grease inside the bearings, which I should probably buy one of them too, but I don't because I'm used to doing them manually. And once you do this, make sure you get the grease down in the top part too. The little slice in the top, just keep pushing it in because what you're trying to do is get the grease up inside. And then I usually stick two fingers in and spin it to get the grease worked around the needle bearings. Okay. What you're gonna do here is take some grease, smear it around the race inside. Be generous with it, you're not gonna hurt anything. I don't know if I'm in your way, hopefully not. Okay. Go over this once more with some grease. Make sure you got it good up inside of the bearing. Set it in there. I'm gonna wipe my hands again because I can't hold anything. And make sure it's spinning nice and smooth, okay? I got grease all over my hands, there you go. Nice and smooth. Make sure the grease is packed in there well. Now you're gonna take your seal, put it on there, rubber mallet. Okay. Just like that. Now, one thing you're gonna make sure you gotta do is take some brake clean and spray it around. There's Cosmoline on there so it doesn't rust during shipping. And I clean them off a little bit with a green scotch pad. Don't use sandpaper, don't be a bonehead. Okay, let me get some cleaner. I'm back. You wanna get that Cosmoline off of there. You don't have to use a green scotch pad. I am because it looks like these were sitting for a little while and it had a little bit of a rust build up on it. So that's what you wanna do. Get yourself a clean rag. Wipe it off, because if not, you'll have brake squilling and everything. It's the same type of Cosmoline, if you guys are familiar with old World War II gun stuff that you buy and they have it packed in it, same type of thing. And then, okay, and then of course you'll end up doing the bearing, greasing it on the other side the same way and putting it in, but there's no seal on this side. So, okay, let's go over to the spindle. We are on the driver's side. We got our new fancy drop spindle. There's the holes where the calipers will bolt onto. So we're gonna go ahead, put this on the bottom and we're gonna start the nut. Let me put my head in your way for a second. Okay. And let me see if this will start this way. Probably have to have it compressed together. I got the wrong size. Because the ball joint's gonna turn probably. No, oh, no it's not. Okay. 
go like that. Okay. This tape makes it a little bit easier than using a wrench on the bottom one. Okay. And then I'll snug it up with the wrench when I'm done. This just saves a little time. And almost there, I think. And I think that the, yep, it's turning. It's okay. We'll do it the other way. Okay. We're going to pick this up and I'm going to use my bar. I'll bring it through. Let me make sure that you can see what's going on. I wanted to get you in a better position. This obviously is going to go inside of here. I got a bar sitting there. We're going to lift up. We're going to slip off. You still there? Okay. Whoops. Okay. Okay, and if you can see here, I have my white mark still lined up. On, I believe that's the camber adjustment. So, right there. And let's put our washer on and our nut and get that started into place. That's the 19 millimeter. Like I said, invest in some ratchet wrenches sorry about the noise in the background somebody started a loud car how lovely when i'm filming so be patient that noise will stop in a second okay let's see now we'll go ahead keep turning this down and that's one of them Super is with the fart can on it or straight piped. Okay. I'm not torquing them yet. I'm just kind of getting everything set up. Okay. So now I'm going to come this way. Let me move you. Your tie rod. I kept the nut on there so we didn't bugger the threads up. Okay. And we're going to put that back in place. Okay. And I'll adjust that. So let's turn this way. And I'm going to tighten up. There's torque specs. Look them up yourself. I'm used to tightening these by hand. So use your own method. I use my own. I've been doing it for years. Because you can't actually get a socket in there. Okay. And i got to turn it this way now. Okay, but you don't damage your speedometer cable. So now, you're going to take some grease and put it around here. This is what I do. You do what you want. This is just the way I do it. Makes me feel better. Raise up the shaft on it, spindle. Not going to hurt by putting too much on, that's for sure. Okay. Remember, everybody does stuff differently, so do what you see is right. Don't sit there and pound me in the comments saying, that's not the way I do it. And do it your way. Okay. So, we're going to slide this on. There we go. 
Okay, I have to grease the outer one up. They move these out of here. Okay, let me grease the outer bearings. I'll speed this up. And you have your washers next. And remember, you're on the driver's side, so turn it to the left counterclockwise is the way it goes on. Okay. going to adjust the bearing just very lightly snug don't go crazy okay let me loosen it back up after it seats you almost want to do it by hand okay then we're going to take our six millimeter Allen head and tighten this up. This is a turning into a crummy film here, unfortunately, but that happens. I'm not MGM or Paramount or whoever. There we go. Okay, that's all cleaned up. Okay, and our little cap. Let's get this fixed right. We want the, there we go. Okay, and I took my hammer up front, so I use this. speedometer cable from coming out there we go and I'll show you up close you can see in this picture here what it looks like and that's that okay so next I get to clean this off which is not a big deal so you don't need to watch me clean I guess and next we'll be mounting the caliper Okay, so I'm going to show you what I did here. Here is your caliper positioned on. There are two 17 millimeter bolts back here that you put in place. Once you do that, you need to check down inside to see, see there's clearance there and clearance there. Make sure your rotor is spinning free. A lovely little empty tag so that you don't need to clearance with shims. They do give you shims here, two different sizes, which are actually just flat washers. But if you have to, and the caliper is rubbing either here, you could see the gap there. And it's hard to see in there, but there's a gap there. If it was offset to one side, then you would have to loosen your mounting bolts up and put a shim in there on either side to move the caliper which way you need it to move. It's self-explanatory, it'll make sense when you do it. But what we gotta do now, I just test fitted it, is take the two 17 millimeter bolts off, pull the caliper back off and spin the caliper onto the brake hose and then tighten it. Because I didn't want to break that loose if I didn't have to. And his hose is brand new, it's only about five months old. 
Okay, so I'm going to take this back off. I was test fitting just to make sure that it lined up without needing shims. Okay, so I popped the cap off the back. We're going to lose a little fluid here probably. Here it comes. And we're going to spin the caliper on this. Just like that. It's a little tricky to do. My hands are probably in your way. Okay. And we'll take our 14 millimeter wrench, give it a snug. It'll be easier to snug when it's bolted to the car. And wipe this all off a minute here. And let me get my brake clean a minute. <laughs> Okay, take some brake clean, clean this all off, okay, and we're going to remount this, my hands are all slippy now, don't worry, I'll give you a close up in a second to show you where everything's at, so just hang tight for a second. Now, I want to re-snug this. Okay. There we go. Okay. Everything is cleaned and ready. Spin the rotor. And make sure that you have clearance. We don't need to shim this one, so that's not a big deal. But we'll check the other side. So here's what it looks like back here, okay? There are your two mounting bolts right there and there, and that mounts the caliper on, okay? Pretty self-explanatory. There's a bleeder here and a bleeder here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the other side next and I'll bring you back in a second when we're bleeding off and test driving because there's no point in watching me do the same thing on the other side. Hey, I wanted to show you something. I'm on the other side and the inside of the caliper was rubbing. So, and I knew it by when I turned it, I could hear it. So what I did is I put shims right down and here okay and the pack comes with different size shims they're actually flat washers but i just wanted to show you i did run into that on the other side i'll take a picture and show you what i mean here in a second but once you shim it properly it will pull the caliper either way you need it to so the rotor is not rubbing okay so what i did here is i had casey in a car and everything is hooked up, of course. Check after you tighten everything up. I got stuff on the floor. And make sure you have no leaks anywhere, okay? But all I did was loosen each bleed or let it gravity bleed a little wee bit, okay? I don't know why that's fuzzy. There we go. And as you would pump any brake, I had him push it to the floor Loosen the bleeder, let it spray out until all the air stopped. You know how to bleed brakes off. I can always do a film on brake bleeding if you want. It's up to you. But anyhow, it's all hooked up. So everything is done. Now we are going to put the wheels on and we're going to go for a test drive. How's that sound? Sounds great. Okay. Here we go, folks. Now we're going to go ahead and take a quick ride. See how the brake pedal feels. And it should be much firmer and more responsive. So let's do it. Wow, that starts right up. Wow, that's nice. Wow. Okay. This is one of these newfangled stick shifts. Whoops. Beep, beep.
doing the same route? Oh, it's definitely a big difference. All right, we're doing 90. We sell these brakes for you. <laughs> This is nice. Big improvement. Very big improvement. Oh yeah. Pedal is nice and firm. And the nice thing about these disc brakes is it stops even. It's not pulling side to side. It's actually really nice. We're gonna do a hard stop here, so hold on to your butt. I wanna see something. Oh yeah, that stops a lot faster. Kids are a lot safer in my neighborhood now. <laughs> this is a very nice running beetle. Thanks, man. Very, very so nice. I'm glad to hear that, because feel honored to drive it. This well, is I'm, nice. It's the only running is this good because of you. <laughs> Wow, oh, this has nice power. Yeah, see, my confidence, I would never get like that going because I was so nervous with this drum brakes. Right. Being not yeah, just as well. There's a big difference. I mean, literally, wow. What's your thoughts on that thing? I'll just bring back here. We'll tear into that next weekend. Wow, this is really smooth. No, oh. it's underneath. I forgot. <laughs> it's, a, it's a button underneath. <laughs> it's got some little hidden gems to it. Okay. This disc brake is a major, major difference. It really, really is. There's that scout. Yeah, old scout sitting there. Check that old scout out, folks. You don't see that stuff anymore, huh? Oh, this this is definitely a major difference. Maybe I will keep my stock seats in. I thought I wouldn't fix it, but I do. So I'm glad I test drove this. Well, you know where it sits. You can always test drive it. <laughs> this is it's better than I thought. Okay. So, definite, definite upgrade. You got to do this. You got to put disc on the front. No more adjusting when you're stopping. It's nice and even. It's not pulling side to side. This is nice. And this was the MP kit. So, usually I complain about MP know that but I'm not complaining today this was a very very nice upgrade very easy to do big magnet and checked all the places where I know they've been doing the rust. No, this actually, you might clear down south for this, you did right thing. 
again. Oh, this is nice. No side to side movement. I like it. Um, let the wheel go and see how the alignment is on the way down. Okay. Probably not good, but just thought I want to see if I can take it to that fair tonight. Oh no, you can still drive it. Okay. It doesn't matter. I got it pretty close. Oh man. Yeah, there you go. Hill again. Almost home. Uh oh, we got someone moving. Yeah, I seen him. I'm gonna run somebody over, but we're in our day. <laughs> yeah. We're their day. <laughs> Satisfied friend. Yes, thank you, Slate. <laughs> no problem, brother. Be careful. Well, I'll see you, Slate. I'll see the community later. Okay, talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, so that was it. Disc brake 101. Came out really good. He's on his way home. I hope you enjoyed the test drive and stay tuned for much more. And thanks for being here.